You're basically seeing the real Ukraine. From 2002, 500,000 для пенсионеров. So we're continuing our journey through the backwoods of the city, of this historical city. What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So we are here heading to the Vokzal right now. And we are going to a city that's not very far from here for a very, very important reason that we are gonna uncover once we get into the city and also we're going to be talking about various uh, subjects that you may be interested in so this is going to be a very interesting video we're going to check out the cool city here near kiev just to show you what a typical smaller city looks like near kiev just to have a look and we're going to get something very interesting there and uh, it's actually a pretty cool story about the whole thing so you're going to learn real soon city of Fastev and this is a city about an hour southwest of Kiev it's a city with a population of 45,000 and uh, we've never actually been here before so this is gonna be the first time this is the train station here we got to cross the train station like this so we got to cross it this way old school guys check out this car this is 60 Second year, 1962, Volga, Zaz, parked right here in Fastev, right in front of the uh, Vokzal here. Look at this, look at this amazing condition, the taxi that you have. You know, Ukraine in many ways is like an open air museum. So we initially came here because they have really good ice cream here from what I heard. And we come and there's a place right there in the corner but unfortunately it's closed because of quarantine and then i'm thinking like we should be able to take it to go because to go is fine even all over kiev you can go to any restaurant and take some food to go unfortunately this ice cream place is closed and i'm going to tell you in a second how i even discovered this ice cream place but right now we are going to go to the center of the city and I'm gonna show you what the, the downtown, the center, if you will, not even downtown, what the center looks like. And this is a city of population of 45,000 people. It's what I call a third tier city in, uh, in Ukraine. It's not first tier. First tier would be Kiev, Kharkov. Uh, second tier would be um, another city that's a little bit bigger, maybe Dnieper something like that and this has a population of 45,000 and this would be your typical quintessential third tier city and it's a beautiful day today it's finally starting to feel like spring at the end of March and uh, feels good here we are walking towards the center and uh, this city actually has some significance it's not just your regular uh, run-of-the-mill Ukrainian uh, village or city. It actually has some significance. It has a really cool cathedral in the center. It has a couple of nice parks. They say it's a pleasant city to live, to relax. If you are, you know, in the in the immediate area of Kiev, and also the city is uh, is pretty old. It was founded in 13 something, 1370 or something like. That. So it's actually a pretty interesting city. We're gonna be looking at it today and discovering it today hopefully we can get that ice cream that we initially came here for and here you have a stadium where you have a lot of families you have some kids running around having fun and this is a cool looking stadium very big the grass isn't in the best condition but it looks pretty cool Had some coffee, relax for a minute, 
and we are continuing our search for that famous Fastif ice cream and I really want to tell you the story of how I discovered this ice cream but I'm gonna do that as soon as we find that ice cream shop uh, hopefully it should be around here somewhere and there it is there's the famous Morozi one we just found it so we're gonna get something and then I'm gonna tell you the story of how it came about Okay, so I got my ice cream here and the lady has a different flavor. Let's try it out. And so the ice cream is surprisingly pretty good. I highly recommend it. If you're passing through Fastif to check it out. There's the obligatory I love Fastif. And in front of us we have the Miski Palaz Kulture, which means city culture, uh, place of culture. Uh, some cinema there, kinotheater. I want to tell you the story of how I decided or suggested the idea to come to Fastif and to try the ice cream. And this, this started back when we were in Vinitsa. And we were taking the train from Vinitsa back to Kiev. And as the case is always, when I like to, uh, when I'm you know, driving somewhere, taking the train, when I'm in motion, I'm always sitting in my Google Maps and looking around and seeing which city are we in? Where are we? Okay, because I'm a big maps guy. And as we are passing Fastiv on the way to Kiev, I see that Google Maps has reviews for a ice cream place in Fastiv, and it says top rated. And so I pull up the, uh, the ice cream place, and it has something like 4.9 rating of uh, a lot of reviews. And there are all kinds of reviews, uh, you know, from men, from women, from uh, young, uh, young, uh, young adults to older, older people, all kinds of reviews, all very, very positive. All of them say, this is the greatest ice cream in Ukraine. This is the greatest ice cream in the world. This, you know, just amazing, amazing reviews. And I'm like, why don't we, you know, take the train one of these days and check it out? You know, it's only about an hour away from Kiev. And why don't we make a day trip out of it? And that is exactly what we did. And so we came here, tried the ice cream. It was pretty good. I really like it. And now we're going to walk around for a little bit and uh, look at some uh, nice things here in the city. We have there a cathedral across the street. And I heard that there's a couple of really old cathedrals here that are worth checking out. Supposedly, it's kind of the, the postcard of the city. And so we're gonna walk around and we're gonna see some cathedrals. You see a, there is in front of me a Lada, Zhiguli there. What would you do in Ukraine without a Zhiguli? As I'm showing you the city or this town, whatever whatever you want to call it i want you to think about what a typical ukrainian city third tier city looks like because this is kind of it and actually i remember the second tier city that would be something like poltava poltava is a second tier city harikov kiev those are first tier cities and then you have poltava which is a second tier city it's a relatively large city it's a well-known city and, but it's not quite first tier city and this would be a third tier city and so I know many of you are familiar maybe with Kiev, with Kharkiv, with Dnieper, the big cities but maybe some of you are interested in living or visiting some of the smaller cities and this is kind of what it looks like uh, you know you have this one main street that extends from the uh, from the train station and what I like about the street you know it has these white sidewalks has some you know green areas has a bunch of stores uh, has a lot of people just doing things and then all around you know in any direction from this uh, main street you have you have some private uh, private areas you have some private houses residential areas things like this and even though I'm showing you this one city this is a relatively well-known I would say third tier city because 
you know, people know about it and a lot of other cities, they look just like this one. And so as we're showing you around, don't think that, that we're just showing you faster. Think that you're basically seeing the real Ukraine, right? The real third tier in Ukraine. And so we are approaching a nice square here, which is very, very common in Ukraine as well as uh, post-Soviet countries. They love their squares, they love their places. And the reason they build a lot of these squares is that so they can bring the people and the people can go and they can have their meetings and they can support the Communist Party, they can support the, the power, they can support all that. And that is why it's very, very popular to have these big squares in ex-Soviet Union countries. And you don't really see that in the United States that much. Here you have a big main square here. Lots of people are hanging out, having fun. You have some, um, what are they, flamingos or some, some kind of birds uh, in the front here. And then you have different oblasts here, right? You have Khmelnytska, Cherkaska, Chernovetska, which is uh, in the Western Ukraine, Chernigovska, which is where we were in the last videos, Kiev, Sevastopol, which is a city in Krim. You have um, uh, Respublika Autonomna, Respublika Krim, which stands for kind of this independent republic, Vinyatska, Volonska, so all the different oblasts here in Ukraine, which is actually pretty cool for a small town. This is actually very impressive. You have Zakarpatska, Zhitomirska, Zaporozhka, Ivana Frankovska, Kyivska. Very, very cool and it's in great condition. Looks like it lights up at night. So it probably looks even better at night. Really cool. Amazing. I didn't expect to see that. You have some more, uh, more kind of parks here. This is all going to be green in the next several months. You have some flags there and then you have another uh, something else there in the distance uh, that has the um, the sign of Ukraine, this main symbol of Ukraine we're gonna check out. And this right here is the main kind of sign of Fastov. You have the symbol of Ukraine and then you have the symbol of Fastov around it. This is the city uh, sign. In Russian we call it the Gerb. And guess what we have here? This is Volga. Another Volga here. And it's not in the, in the same great condition as the previous car was. But still, it looks pretty amazing. Check out this Volga. Which honestly, you don't really see in Kiev all that much. In fact, you don't really see older car cars in Kiev all that much. Back in 2010, 2011, when I first came to Kiev, I saw a lot of Ladas, I saw a lot of these cars, but nowadays you don't see a lot of these older cars or Ladas in Kiev. You have to go uh, to some of the smaller cities to see these cars. Now you see the houses on each side of the street. These are all old, old houses. You look at that roof over there. This wasn't built during Soviet times. Chances are this was here way before that and way before this place was even uh, communist. This was probably here back when, it, when they had a Tsar here, when they had you know the Red Army, the White Army during the revolution and all that. And so it, it, there's a lot of historical things. That building on the other hand, that's probably a communist building. Well, not probably, most likely a communist building. But these buildings, look at these. These are all very, very nice nicely maintained in nice working order pre-revolutionary buildings which is pretty cool from a historical perspective and so as soon as you turn right or left you move away from the main street you're gonna be surrounded with something like this you know the picture is gonna change dramatically you're gonna be seeing these kind of you know, older houses houses not in the nicest condition you're gonna be seeing uh, various children's playgrounds. Here's your typical playground here. And here are some other houses that are not, haven't been really maintained because there is no money. Nobody is putting in the money for some of the other regions. And this is all over Ukraine. 
very very common even the big cities you know as soon as you step away from the center you are going to be seeing something completely different and so take a look at that house right there this is a pre-revolutionary house you have a beautiful house you have this old school roof very cool but then you have you have this what we call sarai in russian which is basically a place where people store all their stuff that they don't know what to do with it. and then you have people drying their clothes in the distance there <laughs> obviously they're not gonna do that or at least we would hope they're not gonna do that facing the main street because it's gonna look so uh you know so 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 weird and not really good let's just say but here on the other side facing the the back they have no problem drying their clothes and so this building in front of us is actually a church would you believe it i thought it was a some kind of an office building but this is actually a church that looks like it's being uh, remodeled or they're finishing something but actually it's a church how weird guys does anybody know what kind of car this is does anybody know what kind of car this is if you're tired of me showing you these kinds of cars leave a comment below if you're not tired leave a comment below because i just love these cars i no, i would never buy one myself but i just love these cars for their I guess for the hair stubbornness of uh, still being out on the road. This is what it looks like when you wander away from the main street. We're on the other side and as you can see they have a lot of these you know they have the parking here and then they have these areas for storages. You have a dog house there, you have some um, uh, children's slides and then you have a lot of these garages what we call sarais. This is called a sarai in Russian and there in the distance you have these kind of old school houses with that sloped roof and it looks pretty cool actually if you think about it it's going to be very hard to find it somewhere in Kiev unless you go beyond the center another relic of Soviet architecture and this is Kombi it says and I believe this is called a Moskvich which is also a very unique car as well so as soon as you step away from kind of these main arteries as you can see, you have a lot of sarais over here, these um, garages. And then you have these abandoned, some abandoned buildings that look like that. Then you have another abandoned building in the distance with broken windows. And then you have this structure here, which I don't even know what it was. Maybe it was a frame of a car or something like that. Then you have another building and that looks right here just opposite one of the main streets and here is the main city park here now one thing you have to realize is that all of this all of this is going to be green uh in the next several months so in, in the summer you're not going to find it like this it doesn't look as nice being this color but it's going to be all green and what can i tell you this is not the nicest park i've ever been to it looks a little, uh, it's not as nice as the park in Vinitsa. It's also not as nice as the parks in Kiev. But look at, look how big of a territory it is. You have uh, these things. This is probably for birds or something. That was uh, these little platforms on the trees. And then as you walk towards the park, towards uh, the center, uh, deeper, you're going to see all, all kinds of little uh, playgrounds, uh, little things for kids, stuff that they can climb, play around with, so you have some people, lots of birds here. And so it's a fairly, fairly huge park. Ukraine is known for having big big parks even in relatively smaller cities you're gonna have these huge parks and this is similar to what to what I was talking about when it comes to when it comes to squares they love building these big things in the Soviet times it was very popular to build these big you know these big Stalinkas 
big parks, big squares for people. That way people can leave their apartments, which, you know, weren't really all that great, but they can meet other people in parks and squares and other, and other things and feel good about themselves, feel, feel in solidarity with others, right? Because in the Soviet times, there was no private property, and so it wasn't, nothing was yours. The only thing that was yours is the feeling that you are part of something. And that's a great feeling in many ways, and this is why everything in Ukraine or, or you know, and in other ex-Soviet Union countries was built around ways and means that, other, that people can meet other people instead of being stuck in their houses. And this is obviously a complete opposite of what you have in the United States, where people want to you know, buy big houses, that, that mock mansion thing, which wasn't the case here. You, have, you had your small apartment, except if you were a, a politician or something, uh, you had a bigger apartment. You had like maybe a dacha, which is a, like a big house somewhere maybe by Black Sea or somewhere there. But normal people, they had small apartments and all they had was, uh, they, had, they had ways and means of meeting other people. And that was very, very important during Soviet times. And as, if you look uh, towards the, the sky, towards the trees, you're gonna see that it's very noisy here, full of birds. And they have uh, their, you know, their place, their, uh, we call it Agnizdo in Russia, and their, their nest. Lots of nests here, all over, all over. And I really have never seen something like this. And I always loved looking at these announcements because that really tells you what people want, what it's all about. This means gatifka, means cash, right? So this credit means uh, credit uh, uh, from 2002, 500,000 для пенсионеров means uh, that means seniors so cash from 2000 to 5 to half a million for seniors here you have gatifka na likovania which means cash for um for rehabilitation for medical help from 1000 to 50000 grivna оформление кредитов you can call this number and get credit and here you have some more uh you have some uh, this this looks like a some kind of a pawn shop. Uh, they buy the they pay a lot of money for a hair hair is very very you know it's a, it's a business to sell hair. Uh, then they have other things that they pay money for psycholog, which means a psychologist here. Very interesting just to 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 take a look what's what's happening. What what do people want right? And if you can read Russian or Ukrainian. Uh, it's a big advantage because you can kind of get in, in, inside the minds of people and seeing what is, you know, what, what exactly drives them and what exactly is working. And here you have one of the favorite, one of favorite Russian uh, things. These, uh, this is called a колесо. Колесо, where you sit down. Колесо stands for tire. And it's the shape of a tire with some spokes. And you can sit here and you can move, but looks like it's not working let's see if we can push it no i don't think it's working i think you need to press the button some here and this is very common all over ex-soviet union countries to have these kinds of places and this was back here in soviet union who knows how many years or you know maybe it was here 50 60 years it obviously doesn't look in such nice condition but it's part of this culture and this is what makes it so amazing there in the distance there's a cathedral that's supposed to be very very historical here and instead of taking the main street over there we decided to try something a little bit more adventurous and we are gonna go through all of these sarais here and see where that gets us so we're continuing our journey through the backwoods of the city of this historical city of Fastev away from the main streets, away from the tourists and the foreigners. No, I'm just kidding. There's actually no tourists and foreigners here at all. Check out this house here. I don't actually think there are many people living here, 
But look at this beautiful, it's a beautiful house. You know, there's a lot of beautiful buildings here in Ukraine that unfortunately have deteriorated over the years and there's nobody living here and nobody's taking care of it. But it looks pretty like a cool building. I mean, you can have a garage here, playground, maybe have a nice fence here, uh, clean, clean it up a little bit. So I think for the right price, this could be yours. And there's a babushka there. the cathedral there and from what I understand this is a Catholic cathedral which you don't really see that much in this part of Ukraine you mostly see them in uh, the western part of the country because there are more Catholics as opposed to Eastern Orthodox or just you know Christian Orthodox in this part of the in this part of the world in this part of Ukraine and so we're gonna check it out but while we were walking we finally found a place that you where you can sit at least outside and get some food and remember this is quarantine right now and so it's very difficult to find a sit down place and looks like we found a veranda here looks like a pretty cool place some people are enjoying themselves we're gonna have a look check it out fast if 630 years and this is how old this is perhaps how old the city is 630 years the pizza and we also have a burger in there we're gonna check it out I don't know how we're gonna divide it but we're gonna divide everything we're gonna divide the burger we're gonna divide the pizza and here's the burger it looks pretty good we also got some coca-cola which I don't really drink and we got two teas here just finished our late lunch or early dinner and I have to say the food wasn't the best food I've ever had I think the burger was like seven and a half out of ten the pizza was about also seven out of ten out of seven and a half out of ten but the best part was the the location the location because everything is closed right now it's quarantine you can only eat outside and we really got lucky with the location because we actually wanted to sit there it wasn't like on the side of the road very very comfortable and that was a big big plus so we really lucked out and right now we are walking around this catholic church that has been here for a very very long time i don't know if you can get in right now ah, it looks like it's open so we can enter and take a look there's some benches here and there's some uh some more information there's the um uh, when you can go for the mass things like that and maybe we can even enter and that's a very very impressive looking church would be cool to see what it's like on the inside as well so it looks like it's closed but it has a really nice garden here very cool just to hang out to see what else we have here I think we have seen everything that we need to see for today and so we are beginning our gradual walk back to the train station just in time for our train back to Kiev. For the next half hour or so we should gradually make it back to the railway station just in time for our train. So we've just arrived back at the, uh, the main railway station and I think in like 40 minutes we are going to be catching our train back to Kiev. And so this is all for today's video. If you watched this far, thank you so much. Don't forget to hit like, comment on the video, let me know what you think. Let us know your thoughts, feelings, emotions. If you would ever visit a city like this, let me know if you have any other questions. 
and I will see you guys in the next video.